Being an Army Ranger is one of the most important things that ever happened to me. I've said before that I have Ranger Tab tattooed on my heart. I felt that I was always had to demonstrate. I had to earn that Ranger Tab every day, and I had to do that when I was on active duty. I had to do that since I've been retired. I still look at myself and I still refer to myself as a Ranger. I'm very proud of that. That's my proud, proudest accomplishment in the military. I am a U.S. Army Ranger. Those who know him believe Ralph Puckett Jr. was born to be a United States Army Ranger. It is true that his young life in Tifton, Georgia offered the love and support to transform young Ralph into Ranger material. He earned more than the number of badges required to become an Eagle Scout, and he learned to fly, two accomplishments that would shape his future. Puckett entered Georgia Tech at 16 and enlisted in the U.S. Army Air Corps Reserve at 17, and later completed Air Corps academic training programs at the University of Florida and Penn State. Inspired by a World War II recruiting poster, he accepted an appointment to the United States Military Academy, and he entered West Point 3 July 1945. He was captain of the Army Boxing Team and received the Outstanding Boxer Award before graduating in 1949. August 1950, a new second lieutenant without a single day of troop experience Puckett was recruited to lead an extremely dangerous mission behind enemy lines in Korea. The mission would take him down the two roads that made the most impact on his life, becoming an Army Ranger and becoming the husband of Gene Martin of Columbus, Georgia. Lieutenant Puckett was charged with organizing, training, and leading the 8th Army Ranger Company, the first Ranger unit established after World War II. When told he would be the company commander, he said a silent prayer. Dear God, don't let me get a bunch of good guys killed. His rangers would later say, Ralph, I thought you were going to kill us with that tough training, but it saved our lives in combat. Ranger Puckett is one of these individuals who is able to say with a, with a straight face and great energy, um, great job, Ranger, but we love you too much to let you stop there. One more, one more pull up, 10 more push-ups, uh, faster on the run, whatever it may be, he has a way of patting you on the back, making you feel great about yourself and your unit, and your, your fellow Rangers, uh, but then encouraging you, really inspiring you uh, to do even more. You know, he's always been a, uh, a man of, uh, you know, fundamentals, ensuring that uh, we're doing the, the right things right. You know, the basics, uh, focus on the basics uh, uh, and do not worry so much about being fancy ensure that everything you do is grounded in the, ba the basic fundamentals. He asked for perfection, demanded more, and led by example. He knew then, as he said many times later, tough training saves lives. On 25 November 1950, though greatly outnumbered, Puckett led his 51 Rangers into an attack against Chinese forces. By the sixth Chinese counterattack, Puckett had been wounded three times. As the company was being overrun, he ordered his men to withdraw and to leave him behind. Two of his men, Billy G. Walls and David L. Pollock, refused to leave their severely injured commander and dragged him to safety under fire. Puckett met Gene Martin during 11 months in the hospital at Fort Benning, recovering from his wounds. And as a fortune teller predicted, they would marry. For his actions in Korea, 25 to 26 November 1950, Puckett received our nation's second highest award for valor, the Distinguished Service Cross. Before returning to combat in Vietnam, Puckett served as commander of the Mountain Ranger Camp, Army advisor to establish the Colombian Army Ranger School, the Escuela de Lanceros, and as commander of B and C teams, 10th Special Forces Group in Germany. He also completed the Armed Forces Staff College and the Army War College. In Vietnam, while commanding the 2nd Battalion of the 502nd Airborne Infantry, Puckett served alongside the troopers of Company B in an all-night defensive battle against elements of the North Vietnamese Army. For his inspirational leadership, President Lyndon B. Johnson 
presented Puckett with his second Distinguished Service Cross. Puckett was also awarded two Silver Stars and his fourth and fifth Purple Heart Medals in Vietnam. Puckett served as a regimental commander of cadets at West Point from 1968 to 1970 and as brigade commander at Fort Carson prior to retiring in 1971 with 22 years of active duty service. Colonel Puckett's dedication to training soldiers to be proud but never be satisfied brought him back to Columbus and Fort Benning. He encouraged them to correct every failure to meet standards, to repeat the exercise because repetition builds muscle and mental memory, and to master the fundamentals. During his 12-year tenure as Honorary Colonel of the 75th Ranger Regiment, his involvement with the Ranger Training Brigade, Officer Candidate School, Infantry Basic Officer Leaders Course, Armor Basic Officer Leaders Course, and others, it has been said Colonel Puckett has inspired more soldiers than any Ranger or soldier in history. He, he is always there. Um, his insights is always genuine. He, he's just, um, just a great American who, who whenever he speaks, you need, to, you need to listen to what he's saying. But Puckett is quick to acknowledge he owes all he's accomplished to his soldiers, his friends, and to his family, especially his wife, Jeannie, who stood steadfast by his side. I like to quote the words of General Eisenhower, who expressed it better than anyone I've ever heard. He said, humility must always be the portion of any individual whose acclaim was earned by the blood of his soldiers and the sacrifices of his friends. I owe everything to my soldiers and my friends, and also to my wife. She is the wind beneath my wings. He declares military wives are combat multipliers who make a significant contribution to the well-being and strength of our military forces. Puckett authored Words for Warriors, a professional soldier's notebook, a garrison and battlefield leadership guide, and has written more than 90 articles. The recipient of numerous military awards and decorations for service and leadership including being an inaugural inductee into the Ranger Hall of Fame, Colonel Ralph Puckett is loved, admired, and respected for his lifelong service to community, to country, to the United States military, and to his family and friends. One of Colonel Puckett's favorite sayings is, it's not good enough until it's the best you can do. And uh, he's very strong in, um, in making sure everyone understands that. And, uh, you know, it, it definitely does push the, the group to try harder. I've never seen a retired leader who had done so much, who then still did so much to make us better than we would otherwise be. All who know him are sure to say that he is a true inspiration who's left a deep imprint on their lives.